Hey, everybody. It is Jim Johnson, your host here with Contractor Radio and the head coach at Contractor Coach Pro, where we help contractors get control of their business so they can grow that business and hopefully find that personal and financial freedom they were chasing in their business. And uh, I've got some pretty cool guests on today. We're doing this contractor summer series where uh, we are interviewing a bunch of contractors and sharing with you some of the obstacles and challenges that they've needed to overcome, some of the success stories, and hopefully something unique about each one of them that will help you to better run your business. Uh, I had a chance to talk with these guys a little bit before we got on the podcast, and this is going to be a special one. Um, there's a lot on the what do we do with this cool vehicle that we've built? We've built this business. It affords us the opportunity to do some pretty cool things. We're going to talk about some of those cool things. And so I want to bring in our two guests, not one this week, but our two guests. I want to bring in Brian Farr, the president, the CEO, the mastermind that started this whole thing, and then his managing partner, Brian Walton. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Uh, it, it's good to have you on because I, I really wanted to make sure that I had uh, a contractor that had some partnership stuff going on. But before we get into that and what that looks like and how that goes, um, uh, Mr. Farr, I, I'm going to go with Mr. All right. Cause <laughs> Brian, I don't know what to do with that. Uh, that's the first time I've ever had that happen to me on a podcast. Uh, but Mr. Farr, um, can you kind of give us a little bit of the background? Like how'd you get into this? contracting game that we're in and then uh, bring us up to speed on how the business started and just a brief snapshot of where it is today. Well, actually I started roof when I was 13 years old and it was the only, only real type of construction or business I could work at at that age. A friend of mine's family owned a roofing company. So I did that through college and I made good money. When you get paid by the square, you get paid by your efforts. So it's not, you know, it's not an hourly type position and, and I thrive, uh, but it's hard work and it was every summer in Florida, which is, uh, which, is, which is pretty brutal. So after college, I got into flipping houses. I left roofing. Um, flipping houses started to, grew into doing a lot of work for other owners, homeowners, and I got my general contractor's license. I got my general and then I got my, uh, my roofing. Um, I got sick of working inside people's homes, the stress, the cleanliness, the you know, access of in and out of their home and worried about possessions and, and whatnot and having too many different types of trades that I was involved with. I, I decided to get outside of the house and get on the roof and, and you know, roofing, if you do a good job, if it doesn't leak and it looks good from across the street. So it's kind of one of the things where I, instead of having homeowners on their hands and knees digging through everything that you did on the project. Um, it was a lot of just, you know, not the stress was still there. I mean, you got open, open roofs in the middle of summer where it rains every day, but it was a different kind of stress and I could handle that. I wasn't having to deal with homeowners in six month relationships. You know, roofs, a two or three day relationship where a, a complete whole house remodel could be six, seven months. So, so I shortened the relationship. And I have I, a question and, for you. Yeah. Um, so working inside the home, like I went through this same route. I, did you do the same thing I did? Like you, you gave them blue tape and said, Hey, mark the spots so of anything that you need. <laughs> like the overhead I had on one. <laughs> <laughs> the overhead on my blue tape was outrageous. Like it was like, okay, I don't want to work inside of anybody's house anymore. I had one homeowner that walked in and there was blue tape everywhere and we weren't done. It just it made me live it. It's like give us an opportunity. It, it, that was what I you have two bad homeowners a year and the rest are great, but those two weigh on you heavily. Yeah, um, and, and so that's why I, I tried made the move out of it, and, and I took on one favor for a friend about a year ago, and I'm almost done with it, building a new house, and, and we're done. I'll never do it. <laughs> so, so we decided to go from uh, working inside of people's homes, kind of the general contractor remodeling type thing, to just straight roofing. I, I get part of it, like hey, outside versus inside, but it sounds like there was a bit of a like a speed aspect of it too. Is that is that fair to say? We're doing more a week than I was doing in months now. I mean, we're, we're you know, the, the dollar volume per day per crew um, far exceeds what, what we could do in a week or two weeks uh, in one single day um, yeah. in, in remodel. So it, it's, that, that a of, it's a lot of our coaching advice. You know, we, we, we will get involved with these contractors that we're working with that are, you know, general contractor remodeler, or maybe they're, they call themselves something like a roofer, but they do, you know, 50 different trades and that kind of stuff. 
And we're like, hey, let's let's get good at one, maybe three max and like keep it there and get that perfected. And then if we want to add something to it, look at that thing that we add and go, is it just like roofing? <laughs> is it something that we can do like that, like maybe fencing like or maybe garage floor coatings or something like that where you're you're in, you're out, you can do a good job and repeat that thing over and over and you have a workforce that's reliable. Have you, did you up for one that? thing? That was, a, that was a huge thing. I saw all my subcontractors come in and out and, and their production was, was good. It was fast. They, their, their dollar amounts per day were high. And, and I said, you know, I need to get, get good at one thing, exactly what you said. And, and roofing is what we chose. So uh, we got started uh, about seven years ago. Uh, tell us a little bit about what that's looked like over the last seven years. Well, it's at, at seven years ago, it was a little bit of both. It was still general contracting and roofing. Right now, the only, only general contracting we're doing is a uh, commercial client. Uh, we don't bid it out. We, we bill it out when we're done. It's just been a good relationship. A big lawyer in town is just growing. So can't give that up. Um, but outside of that, we, we started with uh, three people. Um, those same three people are still with the company. Our turnover is, is very low. Um, and uh, it's grown now. I think we're at 32 people in-house plus subcontractors. So, so what kind of revenue are you guys driving on an annual basis? We double, well, close to doubled each of like the last four years. So we were at two and then at four and then at eight and then at 14. And this year we should break 20. Wow. That's uh, that's some pretty serious growth. We're going to ask some questions about how do you facilitate something like that? So um, Mr. Walton. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about your story. Like, how did you get involved? Why did you get involved with beef? Like, this? <laughs> well, it's, it, it's it's funny. So, so my whole twenty. So, I'm 38 now. My whole 20s. I've been in the industry for nine years. My whole 20s. I was a surf instructor. Moved to Costa Rica for a couple of years. Bartended. I was just kind of this wild guy. I met my wife when I was 29, and I realized real quick I need to tighten up. Got into <laughs> roofing. Didn't know anything about roofing, and so I actually worked on a crew for the first three months. And I remember driving across. The, the B, I, I live in Cocoa Beach, so I remember driving across and seeing my, my buddies with their surfboards, and I'm like, out of my way to a roofing job. I'm like, you guys. But anyways, long story short, so I got into contracting like the first three years, and then I was in manufacturing. So I was actually a, a, a shingle rep, a local shingle rep, and that's how I met Brian Farr. And I remember meeting him and, and, and hearing about what he was doing. At this point, before I came aboard, you were doing, a, Brian Farr was doing a lot of interior and, and additions and all that stuff. And that, that's just something I didn't know. Um, and I remember kind of mentioning, hey, like, hey, I'd come work for you for free, by the way, just to gain the knowledge that you have. Well, a year later from that conversation, he, he had a right hand man. And uh, I kind of, kind of let Brian tell the story. But, I, you know, from what I understand, the guy wasn't doing exactly what he was supposed to with Brian. And that's where, he, you know, he kind of brought me on as the general manager of BFAR. That was January of 2020. January, January uh, is about three years now. Yeah, we had this lead source, uh, LSA lead source. And it was like, man, we is just like printing money here. I mean, we could get 15 leads a week and that's $40 a lead. And then COVID happened, uh, you know, about a month after I came aboard. We both, I remember we had so much time. We were able to go like ride our bikes around the bike trails and stuff. You know, we, there was a few weeks we, we just really, we put on zero roofs. Um, and, and then we decided, the, the rest is kind of history, but we decided like, okay, uh, let's start putting money into branding and marketing and, and, and who BFAR is. And it was a slow process. And, and uh, I remember seeing some of my friends who were also, I, I got to know a lot of the roofers being in manufacturing. I got to learn how the back end of the manufacturing process worked too. But I remember some of those guys kind of going out there and, and, uh, and knocking doors and stuff and watching Brian Farr and I take the slow road. And then, you know, it's, it's almost like with the branding at this point, you can't turn it off as what is what we're seeing. Man, I got a lot of yeah, yeah. That was that was good. I really hate interrupting these videos, but I've got some important information for you. If you haven't tried out Atlas Shingles, you should, because they put you first as a contractor. They want to give you a competitive advantage out in the field so that you can win more sales and be more profitable. Check out Atlas in your local area, find your local rep, get hooked up with them today, and start making more so, money tomorrow. Um Let's let's talk first about this. So Brian Walton gets involved. Uh, obviously, he must have done something that said, "Hey, this guy's special enough to say, hey, GM and actually managing partner at some point." What was all that about? That would be to you, Mister Walton. 
Oh, that, that was to me. No, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Farr. I, oh, okay, I got, that okay. Was okay. I'll answer. Bad answer. <laughs> bad interviewer, sorry. I mean, I'm, I'm still trying to figure this thing out. So, Mr. Farr. How, I'm, what, sorry, what I'm, you, I'm back now. So I, I had too many friends who had, had businesses, and they lost their right-hand guy because they wouldn't give them a piece of the pie. They went out and started their own and, and became competitors. And and I saw a lot of talent in Brian and, and what he is, I wasn't, and vice versa in so many different ways that complemented each other. We get along. We do things after hours. Um, so we're, we're alike yet different, and um, it, it, it works. You know, it's really we do. I got a question about that. So, so what is it that – Mr. Farr is good at, and then what is it that Mr. Walton's good at that's a good balance? Have you heard of the visionary and the integrator? Oh, yeah, that, that's that, where we're going. To, to, a, to a T, uh, to a T, Farr is the visionary, and, and to a T, I'm the integrator. So was, we're very strong on both ends. Um, and we, we've always respected each other enough, even if we don't understand you know, their, their, their side of it to say, okay, you know, I, I trust you, and, and so it's always worked out well. So that's that's what play, that's what played into this whole branding thing. Um, so I, I'm visionary guy, so I, I I can relate to Mr. Farr quite well. Like, hey man, we're going to solve the world's problems. We're going to be the biggest company ever. We're going to do all these amazing things, and it's going to be awesome. And everybody's going to be wonderful. And when there's a list of like 20 different things we want to do, and everybody needs to get on board for them right now. And then you got this integrator guy over there. It's like, hey, slow down a second. We can't do that. <laughs> and we got we got bigger fish to fry right now. So let's pick the thing that's like maybe the most important thing. So COVID hits, and uh, what what made you guys decide that branding yourselves was the answer to that? Well, the, you know, there's a lot of lead sources out there that that give them to ten different people. Um, they're not qualified. We're been in our wheels, you know, with some of these people where we wanted to drive business to us instead of go after and go out and, and, and try to chase it. Being a community member and the branding side of it made our phone ring instead of, you know, uh, uh, lead source, uh, lead generation. But we do, we do both. We've got a balance of both, but, but them calling into the office, they're here searching for us. They're wanting our services and it's a little bit of an easier conversation to start. You know, our phone's ringing instead of theirs. Yeah, that's, that's a much better situation. So who had the experience at that? And if it was nobody, what'd you do? <laughs> Self-educated. Um, we, we went through our fair share of marketing companies and, you know, the, the problem with that and far, far as passionate about this. So if you've got a lot of time, you want to let them roll. But the, uh, you know, the, the marketing companies, you, you didn't know who was good until you had to give them, you know, nine months or whatever to kind of gain traction. Like, oh, no, all right, let's start over. And uh, and then so far started learning the stuff on the back end. He started learning marketing. Um, and well, I learned the PPC program. I, I had to. We were hemorrhaging money. You know, it's like just give me more time. Give me. I, I, it was it was a pay to play situation. And I was getting so frustrated, and um, so I had to figure out what they were doing right, what they were doing wrong, and I didn't ever want to do it. I had no interest in doing it, but we, we didn't, I didn't have a choice. Desperation. And, and came, <laughs> yeah. Well, we could have gone out. Of, I mean, it was running us out of business. You know, it was really running us out of business, wasting thousands of dollars a week and, and the returns were very, very minimal. So it was a, the tracking everything, tracking phone calls, tracking leads, tracking conversions, closing rates. Um, that was big, but just trying to, to hold on to the money. So when, when you're looking at the PPC and, and strict lead generation, you're pay, you're basically paying for all that to come in. And, and the branding's the same, but it, it's, it builds upon itself over time. And uh, making sure, sh- making sure we capitalize on every customer that we're doing now and growing and growing off of that. And ask. So, so you guys have used two acronyms. I just want to make sure listeners understand what those are. So LSA lead service aggregator, right? Or lead service uh, local, local service ads with Google local service ads. Okay. So local service ads. So I didn't even get that one. Right. Cause there's two different, that's why I want to get some clarity on it. Cause there's lead source aggregators out there too. It's also the same acronym. And then you use CPC cost per click, right? Yeah. Do pay per click PPC. Yeah. So, that, so that was, a, those are two of the advertising platforms, but then it goes down to the, the tracking side of the cost per clicks and everything else to figure out where to put money and where to take it. <clears> So you took on this idea of actually learning it. 
uh, and you didn't want to, but you did it because you weren't getting results. This is a track that a lot of contractors follow, by the way. They they hire these marketing companies. All the marketing companies say, hey, it's going to take three to six months to see any results. You got to hang on with us. And so three to six months adds up when somebody doesn't do it right. And then you get the next one, another three to six months, next one, another. And so you go, hey, I'm going to learn this thing. What'd you do to learn it? Well, I got into the back end on, on the, um, you know, the admin side of the, the PPC and I saw the, 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 the ad words and how much they were betting on each word and the campaigns. And, um, but I, 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 my goal is never to learn it. And I'm glad now that we're kind of, I've forgotten about it and don't have to look at it. We got partnered with somebody who's done a great job for us and we now have backed off hundred percent. Yeah, I think that was the hard part, Far, was when we did have who we're working with now for the last couple of years is like actually turning it off and just saying, OK, now I now I find the person I can trust and I don't have to go into the back end and, and check their work. They hated me at first. <laughs> you know, I'm all over them, you know, and, and uh, it, it was it was one of those love hate relationships. And uh, it's, it's actually kill your competition, Jessica Reina. And yeah, now she's, I'm she's great. We're family. I do stuff with them on weekends and their kids. And uh, it's just, it's a good relationship, not just business. It became a personal friendship. That's so important. Like having a relationship with, with that marketing company so that they actually understand you, understand your brand, understand really what your goals and aspirations are, really what route you want to go. Cause there's so many different routes. There's SEO and there's pay-per-click and there's, uh, there's a million different ways to generate leads and understanding what that contractor wants from the marketer side is a big challenge sometimes. Did you find it hard to um, get the right information to them early on? Uh, I think they asked the right questions. Um, you might be a little frozen. Yeah, when you yeah, think yeah. about it, when you think about it, Je Jessica and, and Kill Your Competition, is they're, they're the ones who got us into a lot of this branding with the Salvation Army and Angel Tree. She's the one who kind of put us in these opportunities with the news. Um, and then we kind of took it from there and ran with it. So opportunities for the news, what does that look like? So, so it all, it all started, it was like fall of 2021 and, and, uh, Jessica kind of came to us with this angel tree idea and it was, it was through one of the local news stations, WKMG, and they were doing angel tree and we could, you know, we could get airtime with, with the Salvation Army and, and all that. And they would put our ad on the screen. Well, we said, well, Hey, what if, what if we come and volunteer our time and help with like, you know, collecting the, the toys. And what if we, you know, what if we adopt some of the, some of the kids, better yet, from given Brian Farr's situation, the Maddie Farr Foundation, what if we adopt all the special needs children that year, all 40 of them for an angel tree? Uh, and, and what if we go and show up when you guys are doing the phone bake? And what if we show up and, you know, and, and donate our time when you're actually passing out the gifts to families? And, and they were so blown away by the fact that we didn't want to just have our name posted on there. We wanted to participate and, and everything that was going on. And we actually met one of the main guys there and he says, Hey, by the way, every Tuesday, if you guys are interested, we pass out food uh, to in Orlando. It's called Parrot. It's a, it's a lower, it's, you know, like the, uh, the homeless people in, in Orlando. And so uh, we still do that to this day. There'll be people going tomorrow on Tuesday to, to, to ride with these folks and pass out food and blankets and, and clothing and, and so other, you know, hygiene kits and things like that to, to the community. That's pretty good. I, okay, so I got so many questions. <laughs> you guys have, you're leading me to a bunch of questions. This is good. Um, what does branding mean to you? It's just letting, letting the community know who you are. Um, you know, it's, it's obviously it's your, your logo and whatnot. People want to understand what your logo means and represents, and it represents the people that are behind it. I think I think branding to me is, is 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 the service that we offer to the community and to our clients. To me, that's branding. Yeah, I always think it was this, this reputation thing. Like it's it's what there. people perceive about you is your brand. The way they see you, and so you've taken it this because there's a lot of different ways to do it. Some people do it with this top of mind marketing approach where it's like billboards everywhere, uh, TV commercials everywhere, and you just can't avoid it. So it's just embedded in you all the time. Others do a little bit like what you're doing, which is this giving back and being really involved in the community. Um, you said a war you said two words that were put together that really kind of meant something. And it, it was, it was showing up. 
Like you actually showed up to go do something. Uh, and I think so many people look at this opportunity of generosity, especially in our world, but and we do okay. Like as a roofing contractor or a painting contractor or, you know, any kind of contractor that's good at what they do, they do pretty well financially. And they tend to look at it as their way of giving back is like, here's some money. Now go help whoever, right? Because I'm busy doing this other thing. Why the show up approach? Kind of felt natural. I mean, it's, it's brought the company together. We do it together. Uh, it's, it's something that everybody adopted, you know, we've all, we're all in, everybody's all in and, and it's something that's really kind of held, held, uh, held the culture and strengthened it. Was that something that was previous to the whole COVID thing? Like you guys tended uh, to lean that way anyway? Organic. Yeah, it's all organic. Wow. That is wild. Yeah. Like uh, there's so many negative things from COVID, right? Like everything, like, we don't like to be around people anymore. Like, I, just, all, I can work from home. And, uh, hey, I can sell stuff online. Like, there's all that stuff, right? And there, there was so many people that were damaged from it, uh, from a mental health aspect. You guys almost flipped it on its head and and found something inside of yourselves that wasn't there before. I think what people need to realize is that they, there's vehicles out there that they can partner with. They don't have to do it all themselves. And, and we didn't realize how much Salvation Army did. So we're, we're there to support them. We're not there to run it. And, and so we, with a small amount of help, we can, we can give them uh, the, the, the teamwork, the partnership together can, can do more. But us together trying to put something together would probably be a, a bit of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how how would somebody go about finding the thing they're into? Like, it sounds like you guys, Salvation Army, you do some, uh, I, it's not really Meals on Wheels, but it's similar to the, that type of idea, but for the homeless, right? Right. Um, we're going to talk about the, the uh, Maddie Farr Foundation here in just a minute, but how would another contractor out there, if they're thinking about this, I actually want to get my hands dirty approach, Dude, help me think about that. There's a lot of organizations out there, but what we found and, and just, just the first one that we partnered up with, that Salvation Army does all those. I mean, they, 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 they give aid to the elderly. They give aid to they have a women's shelter. They have a, you know, a, a rehabilitation shelter. They have, you know, they have all of those avenues and their boots on the ground, too. So if you're looking, we found that if, you know, if we were looking to kind of figure out what would what what made us drive or what we are passionate about, that was that was such a great place to start. Because there are so many different avenues that the Salvation Army could lead us. Well, so if we, so we, we put it out in front of the team to find something to do too. Uh, other organizations, we said, you know, is there something that's near and dear to your heart that we can help contribute to? So it was kind of a team effort, and, and Salvation Army is the one that stuck over time. Um, you know, we're two and a half, three years in with them now, and, and but but we put it out to everybody, and uh, we've done uh, you know some other things outside of just this. Do you, do you find that it has an impact with your client? Like, do you talk about it? Like how, how this business facilitates your generosity and your ability to give back and, and hopefully in an authentic way, like this, we really just like to do this. We, we hope, uh, we, we hope, I mean, I, I hope that they see, you know, we, we do get a lot of calls and stuff like that around um, Christmas time when we're, you know, doing the angel tree. But what we did last year, it's starting about, we actually uh, from, from May till May of this year, May 1st, we we donated, it was $50 from BFAR and $50 from the homeowner. And we clearly stated it in their proposal that this cost of your roof, whatever the price was, includes a $50 donation on your end. And we're matching that $50 for you. And at the end of the year, we're going to give basically $100 per roof to the Salvation Army. So December of last year, on top of donating to the angel tree and on top of like, you know, adopting the 40 angels, we were able to give a, I think it was $21,700 check. To the salvation army, so small on a fifteen thousand dollar roof. Fifty dollars is so small, but accumulated over the you know over the year, uh, it was a big deal. And so, yeah. Oh, here I am interrupting you again, but this is an important message you do not want to miss because it's about AI, AI in sales. Could you imagine having every sales call recorded, analyzed, tell you what's winning, share it with everybody else so they can start winning? Everybody's closing percentages go through the roof. If you haven't heard of Rilla Voice, you need to go check out Rilla today in the comments below. All right, Let, let's talk about the one that's that's really passionate for you, um, the the Maddie Farr Foundation. Um, tell us the story behind that. 
uh, Mr. Farr? I lost my daughter two and a half years ago. She, she fought her whole life. She had a very rare disease, um, white something syndrome. And, and it was so rare. We didn't even have a diagnosis until she was six. And there wasn't a name until she was eight. And, and she passed away before she was 10. So through that, uh, you know, I, I had a hole in my heart that I, I, I felt like we could do more to help others that were in the same situation. And, you know, it's not just hard on the kids, it's hard on the families. Um, you know, a lot of families are all in. They, they didn't have the means maybe that we had to help help support that little girl. And we wanted to be able to do things to to help contribute to to uh, children with special needs in their family. So, so what does it look like? Um, how, how do, how does somebody get involved with, cause I, first things first, I, what's the, the web address for Maddie Farr, uh, foundation. So, cause I want to donate. Like, hey, you guys are on my channel. Yeah. Um, so it, it, Maddie Farr foundation.org. It was, it was, uh, it took over a year to get the 501 3C, which, you know, was kind of an uphill battle, you know, with the government and whatnot. And it was just something I wasn't really used to. Uh, we kind of, we, we've done uh, two golf tournaments now. Um, we're starting scholars. My, one thing I did with my daughter was swimming every Friday. She, she could never swim after eight years of swim school, but she loved it. And it was more of a safety thing. So we're starting a swim scholarship program too for special needs kids that we're, we're hopefully going to be launching soon. That is, that is, so first off, super sorry. Like, man, I couldn't imagine going through that. But to, yeah, I noticed this about you guys. Like you turn these things that are, they're awful situations into something that is uh, uh, really pretty amazing. Um, I, from everything, you know, it's, 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 you can, you can deal with it head on. And it's kind of one thing that we both specialize in. We say call it running to the fire. <laughs> you can deal with everything head on or you can let it sit on the sidelines and it just builds up. Never gets I, think, better. I think I just found the title of the podcast <laughs> running into the fire. <laughs> That's a great title for this podcast. Um, and, and it applies so much to our world, right? Like, especially as entrepreneurs, you're doing it in this, how you give back and, and how you keep, taking these things that are challenges and obstacles in our lives and flipping them upside down and turning them into opportunities. But even in our business, we, we got to run the fire every day. A homeowner that's upset, uh, a, a person working for us that uh, may not have done what we needed them to do that day. Uh, the opportunity presents itself and we, we get a storm or something like that. It, we're constantly feel a little bit like firefighter, right? Um, I think that's a great way of really kind of putting what we do together. Um, I got, I got a couple more questions. Um, first off, and I'm going to say this and they didn't ask me to do this, but I, I'm going to do that. Anybody listen to this podcast, I want you to go to mattyfarfoundation.org and I don't care what you donate, just donate something. Um, this is the opportunity that we have. Uh, we get one shot at this life. Um, let's do the right thing whenever we have the opportunity. And, uh, I, I think special needs kids, um, that, that is a great way to give back. I think that's uh, something that was actually like in the Bible, at least the last and lonely, serve the poor, serve the underserved, serve the ones that are having the biggest difficulties in life. And uh, you guys are doing a great job of that. Um, surf instructor, <laughs> like that, that like, we're, like what in the world? Like, I don't know. <clears throat> Is that like a job? Like you, that's a job. Oh, it, it was, it was actually, yeah. So, so I remember I'm, I'm over here on the East coast of Florida and Cocoa beach essentially. And uh, basically, and so, yeah, so I, I actually had a friend who had a surf school. A lot of the hotels will have surf schools behind them. And what I noticed is like, they said, Hey, would you help us out with some surf lessons? We got a lot of kids today. I was like, yeah, sure. And so I, that's, that's how I kind of started. And I was working for someone else. And what I found is that they were calling me directly for me to teach their kids how to surf and, and, and the craziest thing, and I was 23 years old at the time, and there was a single mom, and she had three kids, and and she said, I want to go to Costa Rica, and I want to take my kids to Costa Rica, and you speak a little bit of Spanish, and you're great with them in the water. I'll pay your way. Would you come with me? I said, absolutely. Well, <laughs> yeah, said, absolutely. So we, so we go there, and then the first day, we found the perfect beach, because uh, a lot of Florida is like just long sand, but here, there was like, we had to find certain spots and bays and coves and stuff to surf. 
found a surface spot, perfect spot. And then we actually got stuck in the road there. So the next day we wanted to go back to that spot and we stopped. And then the place that we stopped at happened to be a surf camp. He was looking for a surf instructor asking, what are you doing with this mom and her three kids in Costa Rica? And, and, and so I actually got a chance to live down there for a while and came back and opened up my own surf school in Cocoa beach. Um, parts in that night, it was a really good life. Um, you know, but, but it was extremely seasonal. Um, even though it is Florida, it's warm all the time. You know, you have the summers and you had spring break area uh, time, but you know, outside of that kids had tennis and soccer and things like that, that they were, you know, would take up their weekends and stuff. So, so I really enjoyed it. And I met my wife, um, you know, I was 29 at the time. And so that's when I got into roofing and, uh, and that was, that was nine years ago. Hold on a second. You met your wife at surf school? I, I actually, she was in town. She was in town for a surf contest and, uh, and that's, that's kind of how we had met. Yeah. Oh wow! So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, you caught the right wave. Is what yeah, I guess. Like. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So here we are. We just had our first daughter. She's uh, ten weeks old. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. So funny story. Um, the only place I've ever surfed in my life was in Costa Rica, uh, in a place called Tamarindo. I don't know if you yes. ever heard. It. Okay, so now we were staying at this really swanky resort. And, uh, everybody had gone to do surf school the day before and everybody went out and, and they weren't doing it the next day, but I was golfing the day and I'm going to golf's going to be priority for me. So the, I'm trying to figure out how to go surfing. And there's a couple other guys that missed out and, and like, there's a wall between the resort and the beach. And once you go outside that wall, it's like Katie bar the door. It's public area. There's everything and every one that you can imagine out there. People selling beads and blankets and massages. And there's a dude talking about surf surfing. I went, Hey, I want to go surfing. He goes, well, meet me at 7.00 AM. We got you. I went, all right. Sounds great. Did no more checking than that. So 7.00 AM I walk out. <laughs> sure enough, he pulls up, he pulls up and like this, just beat up, just terrible Mitsubishi Montero with some surfboards on top of it. Opens his door, smoke comes boiling out of it. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> this might this might not be a good trip. The other two like at me and they're like, man, this is gonna be great. And uh, he took us out. We had an amazing day. It was a lot of fun. But uh, that's my my surf story. That's a, and I'm not very good at it. Like it's just for whatever reason, <laughs> surfing is not my jam. Um, but I have a lot of respect for it. One last thing, like um, Florida, right? I, I, we have lots of customers in Florida. I love Florida. I've been there many times. I'm kind of a, a West Coast guy, like a Clearwater Beach and that kind of area. I like I like that area. But Florida has a reputation. Are you familiar with this reputation that Florida has? Florida, you mean man. like the Florida man on the news? Yeah, like Florida yeah. man. So, so what, I, what I would like to end our podcast with today. This is the only thing prepped, and I, I and when I say prepped. I, as I looked at Winter Park, Florida, where you're located, um, two things came to mind. I got to talk about Florida, man. And uh, have you seen the movie Stolen Identity? Okay. You got to go watch Stolen Identity. Uh, the gal that steals the identity is from Winter Park, Florida. And everything starts coming up Winter Park, Florida. So Florida, man, what's your best Florida, man story? You got to have one, right? Like you're in contracting. There's got to be something crazy that's happened. That we dealt with in house, like a yeah, customer? well, maybe not one of your employees, but maybe a customer, maybe something uh, like I got all, I got all Jim. We're, we're all pretty, we're all pretty normal here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, so everybody that's listening, if you've never heard of this before, go to um, Twitter or any other search, like Google search, and put in your birthday, and then follow it with Florida Man. So the date, Florida Man you'll be shocked at what comes up on the stories with Florida, man. So I thought you guys might have a story. No stories? Far? I mean, there's been a lot of them. Any one in particular one that's standing out? Not really. I mean, there's, you know, there's always the naked guys running around on the streets. Or, there, you know, was, there was one in the back of my screen there about 20 seconds ago, if you... <laughs> just oh, man, we it. We're just desensitized, <laughs> man. That's, that's all it is, man. We're desensitized. <laughs> it just, yeah. It's just part of everyday, everyday yeah. business. All right. Last thing. Promise. Um, I'm a contractor. I'm trying to figure it out. I, I've been at it. Maybe I'm just starting or maybe I've been at it a while and I haven't been able to like break those barriers, you know, like going from 
the six figure to seven or seven figures to eight, what were some of the biggest challenges and what would you give as advice to overcome those uh, that you wish you would have done sooner in your business? Letting some things go or delegating to others. I, I was one who would have somebody do something and I would do it behind them a lot. You know, so you, you, you're no, you think nobody can do it as good as you, but you realize even if it's 90% of what you thought it was going to be, it's better than um, you're, you're able to get to more things. You know, you're able to get onto something else. So you got to trust people to do their job. You got to put faith in, in your, your, your employees and make sure you got good ones. It's really getting good people has been our story. Uh, we've, we've just gotten good people. Um, we've attracted them. We, we seem to just continue to get good people. What What do you attribute to attracting those good people? Well, our, our turnover is, is almost zero. So when we have them, they don't, you know, they don't leave. That's, that's one thing. It's, well, why don't they leave? Because everybody else has such a problem with keeping people. There's no loyalty in our industry. Got kind of something to add here. And, and it's, it's kind of a shout out to Brian Farr. So, you know, being as being in the contractor side, um, you know, generally we feel that like distributors are here to serve us and, and manufacturing is here to serve us. But a little thing like Brian Farr will go and, and, you know, get a $350 food truck and have it delivered to our distributor's office. Hey guys, lunch is on us. So when the distributor hears about an estimator or a really good sales guy who's unhappy with his position, that's where it comes. And same thing in manufacturing. When, when, when they get an opportunity, they're like, hey, we really want your 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 systems plus more, you know, whatever it is, they're naturally they're they're attracted to us. So it's the and again, I, I don't know if you can see it on the shirt, but it says be far contracting, building relationships. And I think Brian Farr has lived that through and through. And it's it's, it's a lot of it's when no one's looking and it's little things like that. No one knows that he gets a food truck every three months to the distributor. But I wow, see that's it. That's that's one thing he was we become true friends with them. You mentioned earlier about being friends with your markers. It's, it's everybody that we work with and every, every vendor relationship. Uh, we're loyal until someone gives us a reason not to be here. We got to check them. We're not, we're not price shopping five people and picking the lowest bid. We're riding with somebody for long term. And through that long term, you, you grow and build good relationships. I hate interrupting these videos, but this thing is something that every contractor should have. It's company cam. It is the one piece of software every home service contractor should use to document their jobs. Every picture you ever take is associated to the address you took it. It's like Instagram for every project that you have. Give a link to the homeowner and share it to them while you're doing your inspection and win more sales. If you want to find out more about company cam, check the description below. Save a few bucks by following our link. That's been a theme with the, like you guys are the seventh contractor that I've interviewed for this uh, contractor summer series thing. And to a contractor, it has been about relationships. So the folks that are listening to this series and keeping up with it, like hone in on that. It is so important. I could, I could not agree with it more, by the way. Um, when you need something, you can ask for it. You don't ask for it every time. You know, you give, you give, you give, you give in a little bit too. You don't, you don't kick and scream when something happens. You look for a solution. You never yell at them. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's why we all have jobs. There's problems to fix. And, and you just want to make sure that you partner with the right people. Awesome job guys. So, so Mr. Walton, what would, what would one piece of good advice, like somebody's out there, they're, they're working for a company what's the difference that they could make that might put them in a position that you've been fortunate enough to get into? You mean as far as Brian Farr seeing the value in me and, and bringing me on as part of the business? Yeah. Um, I, I think it was, you know, I, I hear it all the time uh, where it's like, you know, um, if you're a general manager, you do the job of general manager and you're like, okay, good. I, I was, I was, in my eyes, far, we haven't, you know, really talked about, I was doing the position of a business partner as a title of general manager. Um, in my eyes. And, and so, so I've always kind of lived my life that way. So, so if you're, if you're asking for, for an employee on, on how to become the next level or, or see that value it is to, to act as if you're already in that position and you may never get the recognition. You never may never get the title, but I think it's a great way. It's, it's how I've always lived my life. And, and I'm not just, you know, not going to do it because, Hey, I don't get paid to do that or I'm not being paid to do that or that's not my job title. It's who I've, who I've always been as a person. That would be my one thing. That's, that's a huge piece. Um, it's, it's how I've actually approached my world. Like wherever I've been, I've always treated it like I owned it. Like, hey, that 
I, I know it's not my money, but I want to act like it's my money so that I, I steward it well, um, whether it's building a better process, doing a better job, uh, working extra hours when they're needed, stepping in where nobody's wanting to step in. All those little things add up really quickly and you're going to get recognized if you're, if you're treating it that way. And if you don't, you're in the wrong place. It's just right. that simple. Guys, this has been great. This has been a really good. I want to talk to you for like another hour or so. Uh, I think there's a lot more uh, that we could probably dig into, but I want to I want to be cognizant of your time as well. Um, would you guys be okay with coming back for one in the future? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, cool. Like, what's the goal this year? Is there some kind of big thing you're after this year? Uh, not, I, I get it financially. Hey, we're going to grow and double and all that. Uh, good I have go- I have goals as as the integrator. Um, mm-hmm. what, what one of my goals, and, and actually we're we're starting to see the rubber hit the road just the last couple of weeks. One of my goals is to have systems like like real systematic processes in place and onboard trainings and and not just like, Hey, make sure you you get everything ready for the new hire. Like, like what 12 things do they need and what area do they go? I want to be able to where uh, one of our people from accounting can train a new sales rep Uh, because it's so laid out and systemized that way. That's one of the things I'm really working because we we've grown so much and it's, you know, and, and, and we have a, you know, it was just Brian Farr and I, and we had, you know, then we hired a production guy. And now we have a production manager and a sales manager and a director of roofing operations. And we have uh, all these people in place, but still, you know, it, it's really tough. So right now I have somebody in my office and her name's Jessica. And she's, and she's incredible. She's basically offloading everything on my mind into digital format. All day, she's scribing for me, basically. Like, how would you do this? And as I'm telling her, she's writing it down or typing it in. And, and, and it's it, it's been going on for a couple months now, or a month and a half, excuse me, six weeks. And it's incredible to see. And that's one of my goals is to, is to make is to make this just 100% repeatable, uh, very, very simply. That's one of the big things we harp on here in our coaching is making it repeatable. Like, how do we make this thing repeatable? We help you guys design out these processes and stuff like that. And then we hope that from what you learn, you take and do what it is that you say you're doing because we continue to grow, right? And which puts in more processes, more people that need to be able to do what they need to do. And I'm a big believer in making it so clear. I could literally bring a seventh grader in and set them behind a desk and they do it. That's a better example, Jim. Thanks for, yeah, like a seventh grader and have them. And, and so, and actually we went through your, 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 uh, your consulting, the CCP consulting, and, and we had a lot of information and I, and I dabbled in it a little bit and I dabbled in a little bit until we hired somebody to help implement those things and to really connect all the dots and put those into play. You know, we, we had implemented a, a portion of them, but our goal is just, Honestly, it's nothing to do with you being here, but our goal is to implement every single thing that CCP gave us during our time with you guys. That would be awesome. Uh, and that's really what we're about is like, there's this, there's this part of it gaining a bunch of knowledge, right? Like, Hey, well, there's all this advice and we've seen a lot of different things by working with all the contractors we have and the years of experience behind all of it. So that's kind of the knowledge like transfer, which is a big part. Then there's like the tool transfer, like here's all the different tools and stuff like that. But then there's this next piece, which is implementation, like getting the things in place. And that's where we find a lot of value in what we do as coaches is we help them build these missions and then walk through those missions with them to actually execute and implement and put in the right procedures and policies and processes and people to make those things actually happen. So it's awesome to see you guys doing that. I'm excited to see what the results are going to be. I think I'm going to check in. I'm going to be like, Hey, let's uh, get these guys on a year from now. And how did that go? Getting all those, all those things in place. Uh, having an integrator helps. Um, how, how's uh, I'm going to, I'm asking Brian Walton. How's Brian Farr doing with letting go a little bit? He, he's doing well. He's, uh, you know, the, the more people, it's, it's tough. And, and I, I even have a problem with it. Um, you know, I'm a super delegator sometimes, but I even have a problem, but, but he's doing really well at it. And I think that, you know, uh, again, some of the people we have on the team now is just even little stuff like, uh, like, you know, like for instance, we have an account with our phone company and we hire a new sales rep and it's like, Hey, Brian Farr, can you, you know, call the, call the, the Verizon guy, you know, and make sure we get a new phone and everything. Just even passing those little things off um, has, has been, but he, he's been fantastic. I mean, again, we have all those positions now with sales manager, 
director of roofing operations. We just hired somebody for multifamily. But the crazy thing about BFAR is, is with us doubling our sales every year, um, everything's brand new. So it, it's, it's every, every week, every week, every month is brand. We've never had this many employees. We've never done this amount of business. We've never done this many roofs per week. We've never had a multifamily division. We, you know, all of these things. So we're constantly evolving and, uh, and Brian Farr is doing a really good job at learning all of those items that, that need to be done. And then getting to a breaking point where the, where the tension's really tight on the balloon, let's call it. And then we hire somebody on and then they, it settles down and then Brian Farr is onto his next thing. And I'm, uh, and I'm, and I'm looking to, to see, you know, to, to make sure that we can, that we can implement it into the company and it will be smooth. And, and what a great analogy. That's, that's yeah. a great analogy. With the balloon? With the balloon. Yeah, that's a great, you got to let the pressure off a little that, bit. Right? That's Don't it, not it, around it. it happens in the departments. It happens in the, in the company. It does. It, it, it fills up and then we release it and then it fills up again. That's, that's <laughs> super cool. Mr. Farr. Are, are you, are you getting to enjoy anything at this point? Are you get, getting some time? I, well, it kind of goes back. After I lost my daughter, I, I went about a year and a half straight. I worked 15 hour days. I didn't take days off. It was, it was my coping mechanism. And, and I, I, I don't want to say I fully cope, but I've, I've accepted. And now I'm, I'm enjoying a lot of other things in life outside of the office. So the office and our, our staff is a family outside of each other's you know, own families at home to where sometimes they come to work to get away from the family at home. We, we, we got a good group. So we do a lot of things together. Um, but yes, I'm finally, uh, you know, until the next thing comes on and we can hit that, and that balloon blows up. Um, and then once we bring somebody on, I can relax a little bit until kind of something grows, but yeah, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying every minute of it. I'm enjoying every minute of the growth. I'm enjoying every minute of work. I'm enjoying every minute of time away. Um, but it's, it, you know, you can't, I know the idea is to build a business and let it run itself. That's what everybody you know imagines. I I don't see that, you know, I don't see me ever being a part of that. I, I wanna I wanna be involved. I wanna know what's going on. I wanna make sure we're doing the right thing by others and kind of living by the golden rule. And and you set you step too far away and things veer off course and, and it's just not what it was. You know, it's not what it what it was meant to be. So you, you make sure you got the right people. And I, Walton was definitely, you know, he was the best grab I've ever had. On, on taking taking what I had envisioned and running with things and 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 uh, and and being able to trust others to do it when you're not there. You know, I, I couldn't do that when there's three people or four people because there's too much on my shoulders. And now that there's thirty plus people, I'm able to you know get away for a couple of days. They don't miss me so much. In fact, they're probably happy I'm gone sometimes. But <laughs> it, 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 you have you have to be able to get to that because I, I just hate I just I, you know I, I overdo things so I don't fail and and when you're so deeply involved and ingrained in everything it's hard to get away and now I think I'm finally able to. That's pretty awesome. Hey, uh, Mr. Walton, I muted your mic by accident. So if you want to unmute that. I, 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 I heard some feedback and I wasn't sure if that was me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, um, guys. I, I know I was trying to cut it off earlier, but I, there was more I wanted to talk to you about. Thank you for hanging out for a little bit. Go spend some time with your families or go work, whichever one you're going to do. I hope you spend a little time with your family this evening. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for being a client. Uh, we love helping you. If you need anything from us, let us know. And uh, I'll see you a year from now, I think. I think that's uh, something I want to make it, make happen. Appreciate Thank it. you, Jim. It was, it was a pleasure for you selecting us to be on this podcast. Uh, honored, honored yeah. to have you. Glad you made time and uh, keep kicking butt, guys. Thank you very much. All right. So, wow, what a podcast. Um, running into the fire. Uh, that's what we're going to go with on the name of that one for sure. Um, this so much like the thing that really impacted me of that was how many times something bad happened and got turned around into something amazing and great, not just for them individually, but for the community and everybody around them. We can all learn from that. Uh, we can learn from this uh, approach of uh, doing it right, building relationships, and then giving back and being generous. It's amazing what comes back to you when you do. Uh, want to thank everybody for listening to the show. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. If you're a contractor that's trying to get a little more control of your business, 
so you can grow that business and find that personal and financial freedom that you were chasing whenever you started your business, check us out at contractorcoachpro.com. You can go to our website, scroll down the page a little bit. There's a take assessment button. Click that button, take that assessment. It's going to take you 15 or 20 minutes. It's a real assessment. Gives us some insight into who you are so that whenever we spend time with you, which is the goal, is to take an hour and actually do a coaching call with you. Not a sales pitch, but a coaching call based on your um, assessment. We'll help you take two or three steps forward in your business. If you like coaching and want to work with us, great. If not, that's okay too. At least we helped you a little bit that day and provided you some value and hopefully made your life a little better and our industry a little bit better because it's something that we're passionate about doing. Thanks for hanging out with us here on Contractor Radio, and we'll see you on our next episode. Oh, you're still here. You must have liked the episode. If you did, make sure you mash that like button, click that subscribe button so you never miss an episode because our episodes are designed for you, the home service contractor, to get better at what you do, better at leadership, better at running your business, better at understanding your finances, technology, marketing, sales, everything that we do in contracting. Thanks a lot for hanging out for our show.